Welcome, everybody. We are here today to talk about a new chip, chip number 34. Uh, actually, let me share my screen so we can get a good look at it. Uh, this chip is going to add a couple of new or three new CLVM operators, and that's for KECAC 256 and Base64. And these are to support uh, Ethereum addresses and pass keys. They're not really related, but we put them together in the same chip because they're doing, they're both, they're all doing CLVM additions. Um, so to get started, why don't we have Cameron, do you mind explaining what our motivation is behind adding these new operators? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the, the biggest thing that we really wanted to get in with this chip was base 64 decode support, um, or actually, sorry, encode support. Um, and the reason we wanted that was for uh, um... uh oh, I think we lost him. <laughs> I don't know what happened. You might start it over over again, ever. Cameron. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the main thing we wanted was uh, base sixty four encoding support, and this is something that would allow us to support pass keys from the browser. Um, so. The, the data, uh, the passkey provides a signature and the data that uh, is signed is base64 encoded. And what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to reconstruct that um, base64 encoded data to verify the signature correctly. Um, and this is something that we are able to do in uh, just native Chia Lisp today without adding a new operator. But because we think that these passkey spends are going to be very common, um, we thought it was worthwhile adding a new CLVM operation in order to bring the cost down. So that's why we wanted to add that. So the main thing that we really wanted was base64 in code. Um, for completeness, we decided we should go ahead and add base64 in decode. Uh, we don't have an immediate use case for that, um, but it's something that uh, would be harder to go ahead and add later. And so we decided let's add it now for completeness. Um, so that's base64 uh, decode. And then, so yeah, and then I guess I'll just uh, touch on uh, KCAC 256 real quick. This is a hashing operation uh, that is used on Ethereum. The, this is actually a proposal from Yak, um, or more of a suggestion uh, that it could enhance our bridging activity. Um, the basic idea is that you would be able to do something like say, here is a coin that is owned by this Ethereum account ID. Um, and then somebody would be able to come along later and provide a pub key. And then um, the coin would actually be able to hash that um, and prove that they own that Ethereum account, which is pretty cool. And so I think we should be able to do some pretty neat things with that. So yeah, these are pretty simple operations. We got a hashing operation and then an encode, encode from uh, encode decode from base64. So hopefully nothing too crazy or scary or complex, but we think that they really will be useful. And um, yeah, and we wanted to have some cost efficient ways to do them. I think that's the summary. Thanks, Cameron. So on that note, uh, can we turn to Arvid and you're the one who's actually implementing these and how's that going? Uh, pretty good. There's a review or a PR uh, that's been ready for uh, reviewing for about a week now. Um, so some of these to do could be filled in with the, the, the opcodes and the costs uh, in that, in the PR. That's a good reminder. I'll have to go through that and fill these to-dos in. And I forget, would you remind me, were you able to get decode in as well? Yeah, everything is implemented as uh, as the chip, as far as I know, at least. Oh, that's awesome. OK. And we have this, uh, we should explain the soft fork for, this chip involves a soft fork of the Chia blockchain. And we'll have to activate that. We usually do about 90 days after the 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 it, the chip is released into uh, a Chia version, and in order to use the these operators after that software app activates, you'll have to use this um, extension. And Arvid has created extension one for that includes everything, right? The, the new operators and the old ones. Uh, yeah, right. Exactly. It's it's like it. At least the, my model right now is that as we. Uh, if we add more softworks, we'll just extend and make uh, the operator set include every previous uh, extensions. Okay, so you forever throughout the future, you you might as well always use the newest operator, whatever that happens. Yes, yeah, 
in my mind, it's this is kind of a version number, basically. Ah, that's a good way of thinking of it. Okay. And uh, there's a bit of information on how to use it in here and a little example of how to do it. And if and when we end up doing a hard fork, I guess we can take these outside of the guard as well. So then you won't have to do this soft fork um, operation to use it. Um, so for now, uh, the chip, I believe, is still in draft, but it sounds like I can move that to review since the implementation is already, um, well, it's in a PR. It's not actually in a build yet, but we'll hopefully get to that pretty soon. So I guess the only other thing that I had to bring up, that I wanted to bring up was some of these other suggestions that we add, like uh, ED25519 and base 58. And not that we have to do this, but have we, and anybody can chime in, have we thought about if these are good things to add right now, or should we wait on that? Or what are your thoughts? Uh, I guess uh, I'll go ahead and be the first to chime in. I think that those are fine suggestions. I think we just didn't have um, enough sort of motivation to add them into this chip, but I think it's definitely something we should talk about more. We definitely had a use case for um, for pass keys that was already live, like we've been using it. Um, and then, you know, Yak suggesting on the bridge uh, with the Kakak made sense. So we went with those, but I think I could see the valid arguments for other curves um, and other hashing operations. And so, yeah, let's just continue to add those as we find good use cases, but not add things until we have a clear use case because we run the risk of just having a bunch of stuff uh, and complication in there that we don't need. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So it sounds like this chip will just stick with these three operators and then push forward as long as everybody's okay with that. Uh, the other thing, Yak, do you want to bring up your the, the idea that you had with RLP encoding? We could talk about that briefly. Yeah, sure. So, uh, okay. So it looks like uh, for Ethereum, uh, we already have the operators to sign transactions. Uh, and now with this Kakak, we can get a puzzle hash that would be controlled by wallet, uh, given an Ethereum address. So what I thought of, and this is quite recent, so it might need another chip if it works, is that we could basically expose Chia network as a custom EVM chain to the wallet, get a signature that way, and then decode that signature in Chialis. So what this would allow us would, would be to be compatible with basically any Ethereum wallet, be it software or hardware. Um, yeah, but from the looks of it, we might need another encode function uh, that's in the Ethereum spec. Oh, okay. So that would potentially require another chip on the Chia side? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So sounds like a, a good idea for potentially for the future. So that would be great if you, are you interested in creating that? Yeah. I think I have to do more research just in case there's another encoding we need to support to get both of them together. Okay. Well, it sounds like a, a fresh idea anyway. So we're always available on a Discord to chat about that. Or uh, if you want to DM, you can DM any of the employees on Keybase as well. And does anybody else have any questions or suggestions for this chip? Um, sounds like no. And th this chip is, is pretty straightforward. Uh, it doesn't sound like it's going to be controversial. It's more just, do we want to add more stuff in the future? And that can always go to new chip. No problem. Um, just make sure you have a good use case for it. And we can go from there. So for this one, uh, I'll put it into review soon. I'll get the rest of those to-dos filled in. And then it sounds like we need to do a little bit more reviewing of Arvid's PR. And then we'll start getting in, that into release candidates as soon as we can. And hopefully get it out there. I have uh, just some some comments uh, in case anyone is in, like, wants to review this. Like the aspects of this that I think is very important, but perhaps subtle is the specifics about the basics for encoding. 
uh, we are specifically using the, the alphabet uh, for URL save uh, characters, and we use no padding, which is the pass key way of, of encoding it. Uh, and for the decode function, which I think is uh, probably has the the weakest rationale to be included at all, it's more of a uh, just for uh, symmetry, basically. Uh, it's also very strict. It will only accept uh, the URL safe alphabet and no padding. Everything else will be uh, invalid. And there are a lot of subtleties uh, in basic for encoding where when you skip the padding bits, uh, you can have, or like even when you include the padding, you can have invalid encodings where the pads that should be zero are not zero. Like some bits might be set and you have a non like one to one mapping between the basic four version and the final version. So there are some some considerations there to make sure that we do have a one to one uh, mapping between the binary and the basic four uh, representation. Okay. And have you written some test cases for these somewhat edge case scenarios? Yes, they have uh, test cases. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like a little bit tricky, especially the decode side. Yeah, so there's um, uh, the the Rust library uh, that we use uh, has a reference to a paper that basically goes through uh, some of these uh, issues. So I took the test vectors from there. Oh, okay. Okay, so that got you a head start. Um, okay, thanks for that. Anybody else have questions or suggestions before we wrap up? Just wondering about that point. Um, do we need to name the operator in a way so people know that it's not padded or something? Oh right. Uh, so it has it has the URL basic for URL uh, name at least. Uh, so that specifies the alphabet. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah. I'm just pulling that up. Yeah, it's base sixty four URL encode. So there's a bunch of different base sixty four alphabets, but base sixty four URL is accepted as the one that we're we're using that's an official title for it so i i think it'll be pretty clear that's a good point uh, if i may are we sure that base 64 url implies no padding i don't think it does i, I think base 64 url implies the url safe alphabet and the, the padding is kind of an unrelated uh, property okay i can bring this up uh this is the standard. Oh, it's really small. Does it talk about padding? Well, we the, it it's something for uh, I could clarify if I need to. Oh, it does this says equal? Um, yeah. So the, the padding character is equal, uh, but the, it's not the. I don't believe it's the. RFC that specifies no padding. It's the uh, web auth to, uh, and I, I think also the the pass key reiterates to clarify that there's no padding. Okay. That uh, yeah. Thanks for that point. I'll uh, I'll make sure that's really clear in the chip if it's not already that there's no padding. Okay. One more chance. Any, anybody else have questions or anything? Sounds like no. So uh, the next steps are you can leave a review for Arvid's PR on GitHub, and then you can also leave reviews for this chip, and we'll move it along from here. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. See you later. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye.